Vous êtes bien sur Radio Off Parquet. La radio qui vous parle de NBA. La radio qui vous écoute. Kyrie and uh, win gold together, man. These memories will last forever, and I'll tell my grandkids about it one day. First reaction, I know what I thought. First yeah. reaction when you heard Kevin was coming to join the Warriors. Uh, you know, I, it's already so easy playing with Steph, so and Draymond and Andre and Sean and the amount of attention KD's going to take away from uh, me, and he's going to draw so much gravity to him and the defense, and I'm going to get a lot of open shots just, just off his play, so I'm excited to play with them. Who, who takes, okay, yeah. you know what I'm going to ask you. Five seconds left in the game. Wow. Who, who takes that shot? It's a tough question, Sage. I'll probably see the hot hand, you know. We're all capable of making it, whether it's me, Draymond, Andre, Sean, Steph, KD. But uh, you always got to give it to KD or Steph, I mean. Come on. Yeah. But if you have that hot hand, you are not giving it up. They'll recognize that too, you know. They're, uh, they're such, they play such great IQ, but um, you get, you, it's easy to defer to two two-time MVPs. Okay. So uh, if they want me to do it, I'll do it. But the hot hand will take the last shot, I guess. It was good, you know. Radio off Parquet. La radio qui vous parle de NBA. La radio qui vous écoute. I rose on the team and, uh, you know, with the sets were going to run and defense is team, so it was good. It was good to get back out in the team setting. And uh, it's great playing with these great players, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, when you have a mutual respect for each other, it's kind of easy to, to get together and bond, especially um, when, you, you know, when you're competing against all these guys. So, you know, it's just a matter of you getting in front of them, you know. And, and I've had guys that I didn't know 2012 that are my you know, really good friends now, but just having that mutual respect, I think that's what makes the friendship come together a little easier. No, I mean, it's basketball. You know, it's just basketball. We're excited to play basketball. We got one goal and one goal only, just to win. And nobody cares about stats or who plays or whatever. We're just trying to come out there and win. So, you know, it's we try. You can't put too much pressure on yourself. It's a game, first off, and we love to play this game. But we're gonna have fun in the process. But we're gonna be super prepared and focused every day. For us as a country, we we gotta stand united. We gotta we gotta come together. And it shouldn't be kind of us against them. It should be you know by all of us. Have you thought about what you want to do in terms of your involvement? You said it, you know it's going to take more than words. I mean, have, have you thought about? You know, you said you don't have solutions, but have you thought about? I, that I, mean, I don't think I don't think anybody has a, has the solutions. Uh, I think everybody just has to play a part and just kind of keeping that that dialogue open, that conversation open. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of very important people kind of reach out to me and uh, you know want to want to do something. You know, seeing how they can how they can help, how they can step up. You know, so for me, it was just all about just getting everybody, not just athletes, but just get people out there, you know, talking to the right people, talking to the community, trying to, you know, have a voice for the community because they need it. To do the uh, SBS thing like that, over like that, was it because of what you posted? Yeah, it was. It was because of what I posted. Uh, I, I wasn't. I think those guys was already going to the ESPYS. Uh I wasn't. I wasn't going to the ESPYS. Uh Then they called. You know, the, the guys called. We got them group text and said, you know, we should use this, uh, this platform for an opportunity to speak. Um, you know, and it, it was, they said it was all because of what I posted. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that you know, the, the guys that I'm close with stepped up. They have a big voice in, the, in, the, in their own way, and we utilize that. Why did you feel the need to do that, though? I mean, what, the ESPYs or just in general? Just in general, just to get another voice 
Nah, I mean, <clears throat> I've, I've always kind of been outspoken about, you know, situations, things like that, but it, I, I was sitting home watching it, and it just hit me. It was like, you know, enough is enough. And it, it took me a while to kind of come up with that. Uh, after seeing it, you know, a couple days went by, and I, um, I fell asleep, and then I woke up in the middle of the night and just started typing, just started typing, and that's how everything came about. La radio qui vous parle de NBA, la radio qui vous écoute. two years ago when you were the MVP of the World Cup in Spain. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me, guys. I don't know if you're aware of this. It was one month ago today. You guys won Game 7 at Oracle Arena in Oakland, mm -hmm. and you hit the biggest shot of your life. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what have the last four weeks been like as a champ? It's uh, It's been a great celebration. It's been a great celebration, uh, understanding what we accomplished. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Um, but I didn't want to take that moment for granted. Uh, seeing my dad and my sister after we won and then um, you know having a few weeks just to decompress and, and just enjoy myself but now I'm, I'm back out here and this is this is almost I would say it's a little step below than winning a championship for me because this is just an exciting time to be with these guys every single day I, I was telling Paul George as, as we watched them I just before we came here I just got done watching your highlights I was just watching your 2015-2016 highlights, about eight minutes of just straight highlights. I, I enjoy seeing great players in a setting like this because they're not in their team atmosphere. They're away from uh, their norm, and they get to come with guys like us and just really just open up, and we get a chance to get to know one another. This will be your first shot at an Olympic gold medal, but you've been through the senior national team experience before. What, what kinds of things do you learn about teammates that you've only faced before? Uh, well, one thing I... I I really enjoy about USA basketball um, is the, is this excuse me the particular part with the select team. I started there. Mm -hmm. I was it was uh, myself, uh, excuse me, uh, Clay, and a few other guys that now were on the Olympic team four years later. And that friendship and that bond of us going to the World Championship and us taking our time and and putting in the hours for USA basketball and now being able to chance to go for a goal for Olympic is a dream come true. Well, well, Kyrie, I just want to talk about, we were saying it before you, you came here, it's just, if you look at your age and resume from 24 and so much <laughs> you've accomplished and some adversity when the injuries, uh, and then talk about you, you have a chance to win an Olympic gold medal and also have an NBA championship within months. Uh, just talk about and reflect everything you've gone through. And like you said, this time to be able to be the leader, be the point guard of this team and that responsibility at a young age and just being 24 years old. Uh, I feel like, my dad has prepared me uh, for, the, for these moments. Um, I try to live and enjoy every single moment and never take it for granted. Standing that as a process to be where you want to be, uh, seeing players that have come before me, reaching out to guys, understanding relationships and connections that will propel me to be the best player I can be. Um, so I, I'm really thankful for that. I've had a tremendous opportunity to go to a great university that Coach K is the head coach of the Olympic team, um, that connection there, and just... I'm, I'm trying to put it into words what it really means uh, because I didn't really expect it to happen this quick, a lot of the things that have been happening. So, like I said before, I just want to live in every moment and never take it for granted. Kyrie, obviously in 2014 you played uh, the World Cup. You guys won a gold medal. How, how did that experience, you feel, help you prepare? Because we know the international game is a little bit different mm -hmm. than our NBA game. But how, how did that experience prepare you now as you're coming in as a veteran uh, of, of international basketball? Uh, well, it's, it's, prepared me, it's prepared me a great deal, uh, understanding the process of being together for a certain amount of days. Um, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way about this, but there's nothing more beautiful than seeing. To, to getting to know as a player playing alongside? Uh, Kevin. Kevin Durant. Yeah. Uh, I've been a fan of his since I was 
Well, just, well, since he's coming to the league, and, and even when he was in high school, yeah, no, 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 yeah. But I've been, it feels like I've been watching for a while. <laughs> I mean, he's accomplished so much. So, uh, I'm just a, a huge fan of his, and and, and watching uh, how maniacal he is about his work, um, his footwork, uh, his jump shot. I'm, I'm telling him every time he shoots the basketball how pretty his jump shot is. It's just I don't get to see it live all the time. So when I do, and I get to see him in this setting, I mean, it's awesome. I don't feel like I need to tell you continued success, but continued success nonetheless. Oh, Congratulations on the world championship once again, and uh, good luck Always over the next it. couple of weeks. Kyrie Irving with us here from Los Angeles. Vous êtes bien sur Radio of Basket. La radio qui vous parle de NBA. La radio qui vous écoute. Absolutely, I'm excited, man. I've I've dreamed about this my whole life, you know, to have the opportunity to play for Team USA. And you know, I played in college. I thought that was the last time I ever put on a USA jersey. So to be here is special. Is it too early in the process to have an idea or, or a conversation with Coach K about what exactly is expected in terms of role and position for you, which is always different at the international level? Uh, you know, one thing Coach K said is, you know, he wants everybody to be themselves. You know, be who you are, and everything will just come together. You don't have to try to be mistake-free. You don't have to try to be someone you're not. Just come out and play basketball, be who you are, and it'll all come together. Well, Draymond, looking at this summer, uh, you got a chance to, you obviously you lost the championship, and then now you get a chance to turn the page. How have you approached this as far as physically? Do you take some time off? Do you continue to work? Because I know that's a, a got to be a battle. Do you go harder, or do you try to lighten up because it's been such a long year for you? Well, basically a long two years. I took a week and a half off, you know, gave my body a little chance to bounce back. It wasn't much, but... You know, I know I wanted to come in here in, in pretty good shape. Obviously, you have to come in in tip-top shape because we still got about three weeks, you know, to get to that point. But I wanted to come in here in pretty good shape and, you know, continue to get better. A lot of people, are, we didn't win, but a lot of people are going to be gunning for us next year with the addition of KD. So I know that. I understand that. And I want to be even better than I was last year. And Draymond, talking about KD, I mean, we had some we we'll imagine we'll see the three of you guys, you, Clay, and KD on the court here for USA Basketball. But for your Warriors team, just uh, the excitement that you have getting the chance to, to bring him to a pretty good team uh, <laughs> with, with, with you guys have done thus far. You know, it's special, man. I'm excited about it. You know, like the season that we had last year, it was great. You know, but then you add one of the best players in the world. Like, that don't happen every day. You know, and so just to add that, man, it's going to – I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really tough to guard him, but I didn't say that. You know, Draymond, um, Grant's been sitting here, and, you know, they got Coach K and a lot of Duke guys been walking over, but I, I just wanted to let him know and everybody. We have a few Spartans here around we here. We have Draymond. Hey, man, hey. We got Denzel, wait, wait, Denzel hey. Gary here. So, yeah. you know, just, just want you to get a chance to see what this guy from Michigan State did, Grant, and Draymond to get a chance to talk about some of the Spartans, how they played this summer. Hey, those guys... Denzel, I mean, Denzel shot the ball bad last night. And when you can step up and hit the two shots that he hit, that just shows you how you cut and where you're from, you know. So for him to do that was big. And then Adrian Payne was the reason the Timberwolves was in the game, you know. So Spartans, you know, we, we do pretty good in, at this basketball thing. Hey, man, I didn't get recruited, man. Judd Ju didn't recruit me. <laughs> they had a guy named Steve Smith there. I couldn't, you know. <laughs> Judd didn't recruit me either. Tom did. <laughs> <laughs> Judd didn't do any recruiting back then. <laughs> uh, Dre, Dre it's, it's well documented. You've got the legal case. You're facing a, a court proceeding on Thursday. But you made a point to speak to the team, your teammates here yesterday. Why was that important to you? Because, you know, um, when you look at this team, this team, we, we came together, I think it was June 27th. And within that time frame, you know, the incident happened. I'm a part of this team. And so I feel like I owe it to those guys, you know, to apologize, to let them know, you know, where I stand and, you know, where my head is at. Because, like, obviously I'm a part of the Warriors. I'm a part of the Warriors organization. But right now I am a part of this team. And I think it was very important for me to let them know 
I distracted this team. But I won't be a distraction for this team. I'll make sure everything is handled, everything is right, and my head is here with them. Uh, congratulations on making the squad. That's a huge deal. This is the toughest team on the planet to make. <laughs> it is. Thank you. And, and you are one of those 12. Uh, continued good luck this summer. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Draymond. <laughs> It's been busy. It's been uh, fulfilling. It's uh, been a great learning situation. I mean, we got a lot of players here, as you know, both between the select team and the Olympic team. So, you know, being with all the coaches, with Coach K and his staff, and uh, my staff with the select team, talk great basketball, uh, learn a lot of stuff. Uh, secondly, get to know all these players a little bit more closely. You know, what what do they like? What makes them smile? What makes them tick? Uh, what are they like with each other? What kind of teammates might they be? You know, all that sort of thing. So it's just fun to be around them and watch them and to learn all that. And then lastly, uh, dinners in Vegas are great. Yeah, I, I've heard something about that. Um, but you do look refreshed and relaxed, a little less hey. stressful environment than, than the normal day job. Yeah, you know, for right now, there's no winning or losing. Uh, just practicing and trying to do what we can as the select team to get the Olympic team ready. Uh, it's a it's a tall order, you know that that gold medal they've been winning here for 10 years uh, is not easily won. It takes a lot of work, and uh, USA Basketball with Jerry and Coach K has done a great job in uh, setting a tone, building a culture, uh, creating a pipeline uh, where it just has been flowing. But it's not just roll out the ball. Uh, it takes a hell of a lot of work, and I can see it with my own eyes how complicated this all is. Beyond just coaching and learning the future of USA Basketball as you've been doing, what else goes into the transition process as Coach K hands over the reins to you after this Olympics? Well, it's not going to be like cut and dry, at least I hope not. You know, you think about what he's done for the last decade with this, and I would be a real fool to just say, okay, I'm going to go do it my way now, or I'm going to go do this. Uh, sure, we're all different people, but I'm going to drain him. I'm going to squeeze every bit of info out of him that I possibly can. If he tried to just move too far away from it, uh, I'd pull him right back. Uh, but I don't think he's going to go real far. Uh, he loves this program. He's been such a huge part of it. Uh, hopefully he'll continue and be an integral part of what goes on. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about one of your new players who we'll see on the international scene in, in Pau Gasol. Uh, what are you expecting out of him, and, and what maybe can you lend intel yet uh, to, to, to the USA team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never coached him, so so Tommy Thibodeau will have to do that. Uh, so since he's one of Coach K's assistants, he can give him all the info he needs. I'm telling him about Tony Parker and Mono Ginobili. I'm selling them both out. <laughs> well, you, you did a great job a couple days ago with Tim Duncan. He'll have his day coming up here in a few days. Uh, do you expect him to get emotional? What, what, what do you think we'll see from him? That's a great question. Uh, Timmy doesn't do that very often. Uh, he, he'll feel it. He'll feel it. It'll be very interesting to see how emotional he does get. Uh, it's a, a lonely feeling without him, though, I'll tell you. You know, when you've been with somebody 20 years, first of all, that sounds ridiculous. Uh, I can't imagine that that really happened. Uh, but we know, we know what time does for us. But at this point, uh, I just got to get used to not having him around as part of the culture and his professionalism, his humor. Uh, the days that he was totally tired of me and wished that he was playing someplace else for sure. Uh, I'll miss all of that. I really will. Do you think there's any chance you'll ever be able to get him to come back and, and speak to your teams or, or use some of that wisdom he had with being with you for so many years? You know, I think in some way, shape, or form he'll be around. Uh, I'm not sure how, how much he's going to want to do that, but it's an open door. He can do whatever he wants. And anything he says to the team will always be on a personal basis. He's not, there's not going to be any room and any podium or any speech, you know, anything like that. He'll just do it his own way by walking around and touching people. Well, Coach, I must say this uh, this worked out quite differently than the last time we spoke, so I want to thank you. But that was at the end of a quarter, wasn't it? No, that was uh, the, the first day of training camp. 
Same thing. Yeah, exactly. Coach Pop, best of luck this week. You too. Let's go to you. La radio qui vous parle de NBA, la radio qui vous écoute. After the first day of USA basketball camp here in Vegas, Brandon, first of all, just a collection of talent, uh, young players, veterans. What do you make of the pool of players that are here to, this week? Uh, I'm just here with the greatest player in the, players in the league right now, and uh, I think it's a great start to start off my rookie career and just try to learn from these guys and see what they do well and uh, just try to battle these guys and get these guys ready for the USA Olympics. Back with Coach K, who, of course, he spent with Duke at. What, uh, what has he been like so far in day one? Oh, he's been great. Uh, he's been guiding everyone around. Uh, he's letting the coaches work together, and uh, he's just guiding everything, and I, and I love everything about him. So uh, just when I got here, he greeted me well, and I'm just ready to get out there with these guys. Is he any different in this set at, at Duke? Uh, more talented players, of course. Yeah. I think uh, I think uh, when you see talented players, you just want to battle and just go at them every single day and just try to get better and better. Which player in day one was kind of kind of stood out to you, whether it's on the select team or as a national team member? Um, I think I don't think you can pick any player out, yeah. out here. I mean, <laughs> I think every every guy's being competitive. It was kind of a light day today, so a lot of guys weren't going as hard. But I think everyone had a, a good effort out there. You still got three days left here in Vegas. As, moving forward, is there one player that you kind of have circled like I would really like to go up against him? Um. I don't think I have. I think uh, just coming in here and I'm seeing all these players on the USA Olympic team, it just gives me motivation to just try to be up there one day and, of course, just try to compete against all these guys. So in addition to you and Coach K, it's pretty much Duke camp here. you got, I think, five select members and then Kyrie on the, on the national team. What is it like just having so many people from where you came from coming together? Uh, you just see a family out here, uh, of course. Uh, a lot of high character guys, and it's just, it's just great to see these guys out here, just seeing them play on the Duke floor and actually being back here and uh, playing with them again. Last thing for you, you just wrapped up Summer League. Obviously, Julius wasn't there, but you've pl he practiced with, practiced with you guys before Summer League. What was he like today, and uh, did he show you anything different? Uh, he was being a leader out there today. Of course, he's a strong, athletic guy, and uh, he was just attacking the rim and doing the things that he does well. So it was exciting to play out there with him and D'Angelo today. All right, thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Context of an Olympics, I don't think it's a word anywhere. In fact, uh, I know you got a job to do, obviously, to prepare for these games coming up. Have you had any chance to reflect a little bit on, on the last 11 years as the head coach of this program and what it's meant to you? Well, I will when this is over. Yeah, I, I think one one of the main lessons I've learned in, in coaching is not to have a rearview mirror and not to look too far ahead, but to be immersed in the moment that you're in. And because it's the only, it's the moment that all of these guys are immersed in. Like if they can't be playing because it's my last time, or because it's Carmelo's chance to get a third gold medal, they're 
we got six guys who've never played for the United States before. We want to, I'd rather be kind of in their moment. And uh, so, I, I, you know, there will be time for reflection, but it won't be, it won't be now. Maybe August 22nd. <laughs> you've, got, you've got just two players back from the 12 team. Right. Four more from the World Championship team, World Cup team back in, the, in Spain two years ago. As you look at the way the roster is assembled, how would you describe the, the, the character in terms of what kinds of players you have on the floor? Well, they're all excited to be here. That's the first thing. And they're all very talented. Uh, I think it has a chance to be an outstanding defensive team because we have a lot of guys, 6'6 six, six to 6'9, six, who are really good athletes, can move their feet. They're obviously going to be very unselfish, and I think versatility is a key thing. Uh, it is. We have two big guys that are big guys that we really haven't had since Beijing mm -hmm. with Dwight and, uh, and Chris Bosch, and so that's, that's different. Uh, and then, you know, we, we have uh, excellent scoring capability. And we got to make sure they're not too unselfish. Like yesterday, they were uh, really passing the ball around, you know, trying. They were so excited. And I, this morning, I told them, I said, you know, when you pass, just catch and look at the bucket for a second. <laughs> just instead, you know, they were doing all, and they were trying to get everyone. It looked like we were like a chorus line or something, you know, trying <laughs> some synchronized swimming or something like that. And uh, uh, they're all explosive scorers. And but we have uh, uh, we have great leadership. Carmelo did an amazing job yesterday in being the veteran. You know, this is his fourth Olympics. You talk about commitment, holy mackerel. And he was very vocal, as was DeMarcus Cousins. And, you know, when you have somebody talking well, it's contagious. And those two guys really did a great job of talking. Coach, when you look at it, 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 it first of all, it's, it, it's great to hear that you have a problem, guys, passing the basketball. I mean, you can see the culture. Seriously, from me being back playing and 94 to 2,000 guys moving the basketball, just I wanted your mindset. Usually you and Jerry have – somewhat of 10 or 12, 10 or 10 guys that you knew were going to be on this team. But because of so many guys that dropped out, how do you approach this training camp? Does this mean a little bit more? You know, I, we don't look at anyone not being here as dropping out. Okay. You know, and just like we never look at anyone not making it as being cut. You know, we have a, uh, a, a great concept that we initiated about 10 years ago is pool. In other words, 25 to 35 guys were already on the team. Now, because of three very human things that happen to people injury mm -hmm. contracts a year later i'm bringing in mike shashevsky and the managing director of usa basketballs with us here in las vegas good to have you with us once again thank Look, you you're a team builder that's what you've been doing most of your career including now with the 76ers again so you're the guy on the end of these phone calls over the course of the summer from guys saying i'm in or in some cases i'm not in and of course that was a big uh, news making news making news maker <laughs> news item over the yes, summers yes. who is not playing this yes. summer? what's going through your head as you start to hear from the likes of lebron james and steph curry etc et about not being there is it does it immediately turn to okay well we've got to slide this guy here move this guy here we need more of this less of this well all of the above um, you know, something you don't anticipate is uh, what we had transpired this summer, uh, and it was exacerbated by some of the conditions in, in Rio and uh, the Zika virus. Right. And, I mean, no one knew anything about that, you know, until uh, a few months back. So anyway, it was, uh, you have to adjust. The purpose of having a, a, a national team roster of 25 or 30 people on a roster is is to take care of any potential issue that comes up, injuries, contract negotiations, personal issues, or just a decision that a player needs to rest because they're beat up during the course of a season. So uh, I tried to switch the, the uh, dialogue from who's not going to play to who is going to play because there's a bunch of guys here who can play. Sure. Jerry, we, we talk about these guys, and you have a lot of new faces right. to USA Basketball. And obviously what you have done over the last 10, 11 years, along mm -hmm. with Coach K, building a culture. How do you uh, accelerate that for these guys in terms of learning and understanding what you guys have built over these last 10, 11 years? Well, actually, Coach and I have talked about that. And, it, you know, each, each quad has been something different, just a different thing we have to address and feel. And it's kind of exhilarating just to have to 
redo the whole thing again in some ways. Uh, so it's a combination of players who have had experience, you know, a couple of gold medalists, Olympic gold medalists, four World Cup gold medalists, some new faces. Um, but, but they're all the kinds of people, character-wise, that it's going to be easy to blend. It's a matter of them spending the more time they could play together, practice, bond, all of that. Uh, we're going to be fine. We're going to be ready, and uh, I anticipate that this is going to be a terrific team. I really believe that. And it's not about comparisons, about who could have been, what might have been. That's yesterday's news. We're, we're concentrating on the guys who have committed themselves. They're here to represent their country. They're excited about it, and we're excited to have them. Jerry, to uh, just what Grant said about the culture you've built, I, yes. I would love for you to talk about a guy who I think has given such a commitment, Carmelo Anthony. Absolutely. To, to each quad coming back and how, how important it is and how special it is to have a guy like that that can leave some of these new faces. You know, ironically, he was the first player that I visited with uh, back when, back in 05. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just happened to fall that way. I was in Washington, D.C. His team was, he was with Denver at the time. And we had breakfast together. And, and uh, that was the first, the first player that committed uh, almost on the spot. Um, but it was a situation. Right there, good, right there. That's it, good, good. Good, good. That's it, punch again, punch. Uh, as well as a gold medal winner two years ago when you were the MVP of the World Cup in Spain. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me, guys. I don't know if you're aware of this. It was one month ago today. You guys won game seven at Oracle Arena in Oakland, mm -hmm. and you hit the biggest shot of your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, what have the last four weeks been like as a champ? It's, uh, it's been a great celebration. It's been a great celebration, uh, understanding what we accomplished. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Um, but... I didn't want to take that moment for granted.
It's a great feel, you know, just being around this group of guys, you know, it's, it's funny playing with each other because you can tell everybody's like, you're open and you make that extra pass, and he's open and he make that extra pass, and everybody just want to fit in. And that's something that, you know, it'll take a little minute to get used to. Nobody, like, nobody wants to be the guy to mess up. Right. And we'll, you know, we'll get over that and we'll just play basketball. But it's a great group of guys to be around, play with, looking forward, you know, to playing with these guys. The thing I love about this team is our guys really lock in on the defensive end. And I think that's part of the thing that's going to make this team special. Do you, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. and you, you, I mean, you're a superstar. You live around that. But do you kind of take a look around during practice and, and you start naming off all the people? Who are, who are part of this and then the history that you could make with them? Absolutely. You know, um, because you got everybody who's in here is you, the top two or three best players on that team. Right. And when you say top two or three, some of those teams are a little different. So <laughs> being third best on some of these teams ain't that bad. You exactly. know, so it's, um, I mean, it's a special thing. You bring all this talent together, you know, and, um, and try to form one team, and it's special, you know. So it's um, when you just sit and look around, like, man, this is a lot of talent. Until we go up and down. Okay, Hop, you got it both. One team there, one team here. 20 minutes on the clock, running. 25. 25. Yeah, we got, yeah. In the 2012 Olympics, Greg Popovich is running the select team. Of course, the, uh, the next senior men's national team head coach for the uh, next quadrennial. There's that word again. <laughs> As they got ahead of the transition period, and he'll have players, and I'm just going to name a few. There are a bunch of select players here, but guys like Justice Winslow and D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, Jabari Parker, Julio Okafor, Emmanuel Moutier, Stanley Johnson, Brandon Ingram, Chris Dunn, Contavious Caldwell, Pope, Devin Booker, I think I mentioned uh, those guys were all in the gym, Aaron Gordon, so many other good young players. And so not only will they provide some competition for the senior men's national team, but it's an evaluation process for the coaches and Greg Popovich as he's thinking ahead to that next quadrennial, including the World Cup. Which uh, What has this uh, experience been like for you here the first couple days? It's been busy. It's been uh, fulfilling. It's... Uh been a great learning situation. I mean, we got a lot of players here, as you know, both between the select team and the Olympic team. So, you know, being with all the coaches, with Coach K and his staff, and uh, my staff with the select team, talk great basketball, uh, learn a lot of stuff. Uh, secondly, get to know all these players a little bit more closely. You know, what what do they like? What makes them smile? What makes them tick? Uh, what do they like with each other? What kind of teammates might they be? You know, all that sort of thing. So it's just fun to be around them and watch them and to learn all that. And then lastly, uh, dinners in Vegas are great. Yeah, I, I've heard something about that. Um, but you do look refreshed and relaxed, a little less stressful environment than, than the normal day job. Yeah, you know, for right now, there's no winning or losing. Uh, just practicing and trying to do what we can as the select team to get the Olympic team ready. Uh, it's, a, it's a tall order. You know, that, that gold medal they've been winning here for 10 years, uh, is not easily won. It takes a lot of work, and uh, USA Basketball with Jerry and Coach K has done a great job in uh, setting a tone, building a culture, uh, creating a pipeline uh, where it just has been flowing. But it's not just roll out the ball. Uh, it takes a hell of a lot of work, and I can see it with my own eyes uh, how complicated this all is. Beyond just coaching and learning the future of USA Basketball, as you've been doing, what else goes into the transition process as Coach K hands over the reins to you after this Olympics? Well, it's not going to be like cut and dry, at least I hope not. You know, you think about what he's done for the last decade with this, and I would be a real fool to just say, okay, I'm going to go do it my way now, or I'm going to go do this. Uh, sure, we're all different people, but I'm going to drain him. I'm going to squeeze every bit of info out of him that I possibly can. If he tried to just move too far away from it, uh, I'd pull him right back. Uh, but I don't think he's going to go real far. Uh, he loves this program. He's been such a huge part of it. Uh, hopefully he'll continue and be an integral part of what goes on. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about one of your new players who we'll see on the international scene in, in Pau Gasol. Uh, what are you expecting out of him? And, and what maybe can you lend intel yet uh, to, to, to the USA team? 
<laughs> yeah, I've, I've never coached him, so so Tommy Thibodeau will have to do that. Uh, so since he's one of Coach K's assistants, he can give him all the info he needs. I'm telling him about Tony Parker and Monte Ginobili. I'm selling them both out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did a great job a couple days ago with Tim Duncan. He'll have his day coming up here in a few days. Uh, do you expect him to get emotional? What, what, what do you think we'll see from him? That's a great question. Uh, Timmy doesn't do that very often. Uh, he, he'll feel it. He'll feel it. It'll be very interesting to see how emotional he does get. Uh, it's a, a lonely feeling without him, though, I'll tell you. You know, when you've been with somebody 20 years, first of all, that sounds ridiculous. Uh, I can't imagine that that really happened. Uh, but we know, we know what time does for us. But at this point, uh, I just got to get used to not having him around as part of the culture and his professionalism, his humor. Uh, the days that he was totally tired of me and wished that he was playing someplace else for sure. Uh, I'll miss all of that. I really will. Do you think there's any chance you'll ever be able to get him to come back and, and speak to your teams or, or use some of that wisdom he had with being with you for so many years? You know, I think in some way, shape, or form, he'll be around. Uh, I'm not sure how how much he's going to want to do that, but it's an open door. He can do whatever he wants. And anything he says to the team will always be on a personal basis. He's not, there's not going to be any room and any podium or any speech, you know, anything like that. He'll just do it his own way by walking around and touching people. Well, Coach, I must say this, uh, this worked out quite differently than the last time we spoke, so I want to thank you. But that was at the end of a quarter, wasn't it? No, that was uh, the, the first day of training camp. Same thing. Yeah, exactly. Coach Pop, best of luck this week. You too. Let's Take go care. to dinner sometime. Okay, we will. Do you drink wine? Um, you know, whatever, you, whatever you're buying. Okay, because if you don't drink wine... You... La radio qui vous parle de NBA, la radio qui vous écoute. success and your final go around now your final quadrennial which is a word we only pull out here on this show um <laughs> i know you've got a job to do here obviously the, to the grant for didn't use that word no, no grant didn't no, use that did word not. it's not a duke word by the way <laughs> actually it's so, not a word anywhere South else Lakes, uh, <laughs> outside the context of an olympics i don't think it's a word anywhere in fact <laughs> Uh, I know you got a job to do, obviously, to prepare for these games coming up. Have you had any chance to reflect a little bit on, on the last 11 years as the head coach of this program and what it's meant to you? Well, I will when this is over. Yeah, I, I think one, one of the main lessons I've learned in, in coaching is not to have a rearview mirror and not to look too far ahead, but to be immersed in the moment that you're in. And because it's the only, it's the moment that all of these guys are immersed in. Like if they can't be playing because it's my last time, or because it's Carmelo's chance to get a third gold medal. There, we got six guys who've never played for the United States before. We want to. I'd rather be kind in, in their moment. And uh, so, I, I, you know, there will be time for reflection, but it won't be. It won't be now. Maybe. August 22nd. <laughs> you've, got, you've got just two players back from the 12 team. Right. Four more from the World Championship team, World Cup team back in uh, in Spain two years ago. As you look at the way the roster is assembled, how would you describe the, the, the character in terms of what kinds of players you have on the floor? Well, they're all excited to be here. That's the first thing. And they're all very talented. Uh, I think it has a chance to be an outstanding defensive team because we have a lot of guys, 6'6 six, six to 6'9". Six, who are really good athletes, can move their feet. They're obviously going to be very unselfish. And I think versatility is a key thing. Uh, it is. We have two big guys that are big guys that we really haven't had since Beijing mm -hmm. with Dwight and, uh, and Chris Bosch. And so that's, that's different. Uh, and then, you know, we, we have uh, excellent scoring capability. And we got to make sure they're not too unselfish. Like yesterday, they were 
really passing the ball around, you know, mm-hmm. trying. They were so excited, and I this morning I told them I said, you know, when you pass, just catch and look at the bucket for a second. <laughs> just instead, you know, they were doing all and they were trying to get everyone. It looked like we were like a chorus line or something, you know, trying to <laughs> some synchronized swimming or something like that. And uh, uh, they're all explosive scorers. And but we have uh, uh, we have. Great leadership. Carmelo did an amazing job yesterday in being the veteran. You know, this is his fourth Olympics. You talk about commitment. Holy mackerel. And he was very vocal, as was the Marcus Cousins. And, you know, when you have somebody talking well, it's contagious. And those two guys really did a great job of talking. Coach, when you look at it, 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 first of all, it's it's great to hear that you have a problem, guys, passing the basketball. I mean, you can see the culture, seriously, from me being back playing and 94 to 2,000 guys moving the basketball. Just I wanted your mindset. Usually you and Jerry have somewhat of 10 or 12, 10 or 10 guys that you knew would be on this team. But because of so many guys have dropped out, how do you approach this training camp? Does this mean a little bit more? You know, we don't look at anyone not being here as dropping out. Okay. You know, and just like we never look at anyone not making it as being cut. You know, we have a, uh, a, a great concept that we initiated about 10 years ago is pool. In other words, 25 to 35 guys were already on the team. Now, because of three very human things that happen to people, injury, mm-hmm. contracts, mm-hmm. okay, and family situations, you are always going to get some people who cannot play. And so instead of picking 12, only having 12 like the old days uh, over 10 years ago, you have this pool. So we have X amount of guys who can't play. That's the way we look. And that, that, that's been there for every competition. I mean, we, we haven't had a 100% comeback or whatever. So that doesn't bother us. You know, that's human. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like. Would we want LeBron here? Yes. LeBron has served in three Olympics. It, you know, so we understand that. He's been in, I think, six consecutive. Six straight, yeah. Yeah, right. come on. You know, these guys, they're, you know, they're going to play, if they're lucky, 15 years. And like Carmelo, he's, most, of his, most of his career life, he's given to USA basketball. So, you know, Steph got hurt. You know, you want to be cautious. Mm-hmm. All that kind of stuff. And that, that com- that's that been with every competition. Coach, you talked about a lot of new faces this year on this yeah. Olympic team. How do you integrate these new guys into this USA basketball uh, system and your style of play? Well, the very first thing, Grant, is, is not to assume what we've done before, not skip steps. And so even the first night we had a standards meeting, a motivational video, you know, Oh, yeah, we did that in 208. Yeah, yeah, but these guys, only one of them was here. <laughs> right, right. You know, so you don't skip any steps in that regard. And then get to know, it's the first time I've seen Jimmy Butler in person. First time I've seen Paul George in two years. I've never seen Kyle Lowry in person. So yesterday, I'm trying, and that's what I talked to him this morning about. Uh, I don't want to put a system in and make you guys, I want to get to know you and keep it simple, but try to personalize it. So that's what we're going to try to do throughout that five-game tour. You know, when we start off uh, Friday against Argentina, and then we go to L.A., Oakland, Chicago, and Houston, get to know one another and personalize it for them. And I I mean, Jimmy Butler is really good. (laughs) Yes, he is. He's really good, and he's really strong. I thought you were strong. No, you yeah. thought wrong, Coach. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I'm not that strong. <laughs> and, uh, and Paul can just, anyway, I, you know, I coach KD and Carmelo right. and obviously Kyrie and DeMarcus and these guys. But that, that, that you know, and then we as a staff talk about it. How, how can we use these guys? Yeah, a different style of play as well. I think fans sometimes forget that as well when you get to international competition. But for the guys who are wearing Team USA jerseys basically for the first time and certainly yeah. at this level, what do you tell them? About what's going to be different. And they have some of the exhibition season to figure this stuff out, but rules changes, obviously, more physical play, some other things uh, come into play that just they don't face at the NBA level. Well, it's, uh, you know, one, a couple things. One, we have to learn a collective language, like a teams might call a, a trap, a blitz, and ice, and mm-hmm. what does red mean, what does blue, you, you get on that page. But the other thing is for them to all uh, feel what they're, 
what they're what they're doing. And and then we try to show them like yesterday morning before practice, we went through the differences between FIBA International and the NBA. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are differences. The ball is different, has more panels. Yep. You know, that kind of stuff. And, and then we have international officials here calling it the way we're going to do it. Like today, we're going to work on free throw blockouts. Okay. Yeah, you can send them. In international, it's like the college. But then also, it's loose. And so can we be sharper on free throw blockouts? Like Carmelo's been a master of getting in and getting boards. Uh, DeMarcus can do that. And then what do the perimeter guys do? Do they just stand there or do they move and maybe you kick out and you get a, a three? You know, we're, so just they're changes. You know, uh, they're only 40 minutes in a game, not 48. The fifth foul right. is a yeah. double bonus. So team fouls. The four of us could be star. Hopefully, two of you would. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but we could all have fouls, and so the fifth foul would be double, and we put in a new group. I don't have any fouls. I thought, oh, it's two free throws. You, another guy fouls. We could have eight or nine guys with one foul, but we've given up eight free throws. Right. So what we do, we did a good job of that with the World Cup team, is we yelled out. You know, from the bench, we got three, we got four. So a guy coming in the game, it's not what he knows he has. It's he knows what we have and stuff like that. So if we can win the free throw battle and then uh, win, the, win the three point shooting battle, mm -hmm. we're going to have we, in London. I think it, we averaged 28 points a game more in those two categories than our opponents just by concentrating on defending the three, getting open ones, and not putting people on the line and getting to the line, stuff like that. Look forward to uh, watching your guys go through the paces and watch you coach them up. Congratulations Thank on all you. success with Team USA. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski is on a 35-game win streak, by the way. La radio qui vous parle de NBA, la radio qui vous écoute.
And I thought that I would sit here and chill and just relax because, after all, I am coming on Monday, uh, fresh off a long vacation. I'm very rested, ready to roar. I could have waited till Monday with first take with Max Kellerman. Uh, he skips successor. But in the end, I decided I wasn't going to do that. Here is why. I saw some headline trending on Facebook, no less, where they're talking about how Russell Westbrook is pretty ticked off, pretty upset, and eager to go next season. Now, first things first, does this mean that Russell Westbrook is going to stay in OKC long term? That remains to be seen. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Does it mean that he should consider staying after all and not leaving? I don't know if I'm willing to say that. Let's see what Sam Presti is going to do in terms of getting the talent around him now that you lost one of the top three players in the world and Kevin Durant. Who said bye to you, by the way? Who said good riddance, by the way? Who said he no longer wants to be in OKC, by the way? Although he said it next year. Here's the thing that's on me. Russell Westbrook, should he be tipped? Let me take it a step further. He should be pissed off. He should be pissed. And I'm going to tell you why he should be pissed. It's not because Kevin Durant backstabbed him or anything like that. Very, It very well might have been the case that Kevin Durant decided to leave OKC. Because guess what? As Chris Rock told me a few weeks ago, you can buy sushi in San Francisco or Oakland 4 in the morning. You can't do that in OKC. It very well may be that Kevin Durant, Mr. Choir Boy himself, actually wanted a little bit of a nightlife. I don't know. He might have wanted to grow up in the big city. It's more marketable there. We get all of that. And he's not lying. I'm not accusing him of lying. I'm not here to say anything negative about Kevin Durant. What I will say, however, is if you're Russell Westbrook, you're one of the top five players in the world, on the planet. Your athleticism is off the charts. As far as I'm concerned, you're the most athletic point guard we have ever seen in NBA history. There used to be a debate between you and Derrick Rose. No more. Nobody cares about Derrick Rose anymore on that level. We know he can still play. We hope that he remains healthy, but he is not in the same stratosphere as his friend Russell Westbrook, at least at this moment in time, due to health concerns alone. So if you're Russell Westbrook, you're a former scoring champion, you're a perennial all-star now, you're universally recognized as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, athletic point guard in NBA history. You're Russell Westbrook? And Kevin Durant leaves you when you were 48 minutes away from a birth to the NBA Finals? Whether Kevin Durant meant anything negative about it or not is not the point. If you're Russell Westbrook and you're looking for a source of motivation, if you need motivation, which he usually doesn't, could you imagine how ticked off he should be? How he's supposed to be? If I'm going to say it again, because I'm not on ESPN, I'm on Facebook. I can use the word pissed on Facebook. And I'm telling you, that's how Russell Westbrook should feel right now. He should be disgusted. He should be annoyed. He should be insulted. Because guess what? I'm Kevin Durant. I basically said, I want to go and play with Steph Curry rather than you. Because we all know that even though Kevin Durant may not have meant it that way at all, that's how a lot of basketball fans out there are going to embrace it. You are Russell Westbrook. You are on a championship contender. The two of you together should have equaled a championship by now. It didn't happen, and then he leaves you. And oh, by the way, if I remember correctly, I think y'all had, had dinner a week before free agency, which means that when Kevin Durant decided to go to Golden State, you got a phone call. Oh, really? Really? A phone call. After nine years, a phone call. Now, if they met together or whatever, I don't know. I'm just going by what I read because, after all, I have been on vacation. And I've had better things to do with my time than monitor the emotions and the feelings behind or in the aftermath of Kevin Durant going to Golden State. But I'm thinking about Russell Westbrook. You got to be ticked off. And if you're Russell Westbrook next year, here's what you want to do. You want to annihilate everybody in your path. You want to remind the world what the hell was Kevin Durant doing thinking about leaving you. Or ended up leaving you. And oh, by the way, you also want to make this point. We didn't win, but it wasn't my fault. Because we all know that when OKC spent the last three minutes turning over the basketball six in their last eight possessions, when they went 0 for 3 with six turnovers, him and KD combined, in the last minute and a half or so, we all know everybody was looking at Russell Westbrook. 
and saying, you know what, that's why Kevin Durant probably loved because he probably loved because of Russell Westbrook. Even though Kevin Durant may not have meant it to come across that way, there is no doubt that basketball lovers everywhere are looking at that situation, and at least half of them are blaming you, Russell Westbrook. Now, I don't think that's fair, because I think Russell Westbrook is a superstar extraordinaire. I don't think it's right, but I'm here to tell you, most of the public don't care about what's right and wrong. They care about their feelings. And if there's anybody who has feelings, it's Russell Westbrook. So Russell Westbrook, do something about that. Kevin Durant has help. Last time I checked, you ain't going to have much of it. Victor Oladipo doesn't qualify. Steven Adams, they all can play. Don't qualify. Enos Cantor, they all going to play. Don't qualify. By the way, nothing but the best of you is Enos Cantor. You can tell me. You got yourself in a little bit of time there. A little bit of you. So you got people getting depth up. Be safe, my brother. Be safe. But I'm back to the basketball point. Russell Westbrook. I don't blame him one bit for being pissed. I would too if I were that good and I was on a championship contender and the superstar of the team beside myself just left me. It's not about what Kevin Durant's intent was in all of this. It's about using things as motivational tools to elevate your level of play and hostility to another level. Michael Jordan fabricated animosity all the time. Kobe did it too. All the great guys did it. Guess what, Russell Westbrook? You don't even have to. Kevin Durant handed it to you on a silver platter. Enjoy, my brother. Enjoy. I'm out, y'all. Talk to y'all later. I'll be back with you. Remember. First take, I return Monday with my man Max telling me, buckle up. This is just a taste. I'm just getting started. Thank you.